Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Kitty Covens, and I'm in here via Zoom, joining with my guests at this evening. I think I hear audio on his end. Um, one of my good friends, Weapon the 502, hip hop artist, wrestling fan. The man is a, is a treasure at this point. He's a treasure. Uh, for Louisville Hip Hop, and he's quite entertaining too. Um, so joining me, I think he's in the car somewhere. <laughs> hey, yes, I, I apologize. I'm in a car, so I know it's hard to see me. Yeah. How's it going, man? Oh, man, it's going good, man. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for wanting to do this Zoom. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Oh, man, no problem, man. I uh, was on the way home, got got caught in traffic. But uh, man, how's it been? I'm hanging in there. Had a busy weekend and such, but uh, just dealing with this pandemic like everybody else. So yeah, yeah, same man, yeah. same man. So we we doing what we gotta do. Um, so you know, let's get caught up with you and see what you've been up to. You, I want to start off with the '92 Levers joint. You and Rob Lee. Um, y'all two have collaborated in the past, obviously, on um, Liddy Boy off the Art of Flight album that yeah, yeah. a couple years ago. So what was it like to reunite with Rob Lee for this track? Uh, well, you know, the funny thing is uh, we're, we're pretty cool and, and, you know, outside of music. So, it, it, you know, it was one of those things like, oh, we got to do something. You know, we're always talking about it. And then I, I had, I, you know, I heard that beat. The first thing in my mind was like, okay, I can see him doing a hook on this. And so um, I wanted to do something, you know, I wanted to do something fun, but I, I also wanted to do within, you know, my realms of, you know, as far as, you know, like a Peter Wesley song, uh, you know, Liddy Boy was, you know, more his vibe, which, which I love, but I, you know, this time I wanted to do it, you know, with, with, with me in the forefront of it. That's that's fair. Doing it the Peter Wesley way, and it came out nice with it. Um, and you know, I you are known, you know, very clever with the rhymes, with the bars, and you always made sure to put a wrestling reference on there. And I think in the by the end of the song, you said, "Can't nobody flex on me like Jordan Grace." I'm like, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that is the Peter Wesley way. So I, I like that. Um, so go check out 92 Levels. It's uh, on all the uh, the platforms. Check that out. And now we get to a different track that you did, Money Ritual. I played that before you joined the uh, Zoom conversation. Different track, obviously. Um, what was it like recording that song? What's the, uh, which track was it again? Oh, Money, Money Ritual. Oh, that song. Now, Money Ritual, uh, man, I was, that was, I had a blast making that. Um, it was, uh, I think we lost Peter. I think we lost him. Yeah, and uh, he's uh, in traffic somewhere. Um, I think we lost him. So, and it's a blank screen. All right, you got me out? Yeah, yeah, I hear you now. But uh, as far as money, ritual, uh, money ritual, um, you know, it was just one of those things sitting in the house during the pandemic that I came up with. Uh, it turned out to be one of, you know, one of my favorite songs I've done, uh, period. Uh, you know, we just, just sitting in the house and, and thinking about money is where it came from. Yeah, it's, it's self-explanatory, to say the least. Um, taking care of your money and managing it. Um, and in hip-hop, you hear artists all the time bragging about money that they have or money they're about to get, but you rarely hear people talk about how to manage it, how to hang on to it per se. And Money Ritual is a song that 
that discussed that. So I like that track, um, uh, Running Ritual. It's a dope track. You can catch that at 92 levels on all the platforms. Go check that out. And I noticed you also did a collaboration EP with Don B recently that, that came out, um, Apocalypse Twins. Uh, talk about working with Don B on this, on this EP. That, um, that was a real fun project. We actually did most of that before. Actually, we did all of that before the pandemic. Okay. So it was one of those things that we had just been sitting on. It was like, you know, when everything hits, like, when are we going to put it out? And uh, we just, you know, it was just like, all right, well, let's just do it now. Because, you know, we're already ready to start on the follow-up to it. So it was like, you know, we wanted to get that out before we felt like it was too old. Um, but no, working with Dom's always great. Um, you know, and with somebody with his skill, his skill level, you know, it's always going to keep on your toes. So we, we're definitely going to, it's going to be a, it's not a one, you know, one and done thing. We're going to be doing, you know, more projects together. Yeah, I, I definitely want to hear more from you and, and Dom. Dom is a talented artist. He's had a busy year uh, musically yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. So so shout out to Dom. Shout out to all the Louisville hip-hop artists. Um, Apocalypse Twins is the name of the collaboration project with Peter Wesley and Dom B. That is out on all the platforms as well. So go check that out. Let's let's get to, you know, I know you for being a wrestling fan as well as myself. So I know you had a lot of fun being, you know, getting your Howard Finkel uh, skills in display on the Royale with Cheese joint off of the Creative Natives uh, compilation album. Uh, and it featured a plethora of Louisville artists. Uh, so talk about being able to contribute to uh, that track, um, getting your wing announcing skills on in, in that track. Well, they, they have that. And I think they were trying to get, I think someone like, uh, like, I don't know, like the, you know, uh, Louisville, like, uh, wrestling scene to like get on it, and I believe somebody was just like, well, "Why don't you get Peter Wesley to do it?" And everyone agreed, so it was like, and so uh, Furious Floyd, formerly known as Pronoun, reached out to me, uh, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we got it. We want you to be on here, like wrestling announcer." They didn't give me any, you know, any, uh, you know, script or nothing. Just let me run wild with it, and you know, that was great. Um, so I, I did that. I believe that was like one of the last things. They got recorded for the project. Was was me doing that? Awesome, um, and, and it turned out great. Um, I love the track. I love the back and forth, and you just trying to keep things under control. Uh, so that was a, a dope track. Uh, shout out to all the creative natives, uh, Wamil, uh, Furious Floor, and company. Congrats to them on the release of this uh, compilation album showcasing all their artists on their label. It's a dope um, album. So support that local hip hop, support that. And uh, Peter Wesley's on there. That's definitely a, a reason why you should uh, give it a listen. So. It's, it's, a, it's a really dope project. I got to, I was at the, the release show last Friday. Uh, they performed the whole project. It, it was really dope. And you did mention at the end of that track that volume two is on the way. So yeah, that's that's a good way to end volume yeah, one. Definitely so, doing volume two. I, I'm sure I'll be on it doing doing more than announcing on, on that one. Yeah. Not, yeah, but, not to spoil anything, but yeah. I, yeah. I <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so Peter Wesley, man, he's got the the tracks, he's got the appearances, he's got a lot going for him. So go check out all the songs that we mentioned. And uh, so let's get into the wrestling part. Um, where do we begin? Uh, 
I am walking my senior punk t-shirt right now. I got the, it's clobbering time. It's been a, quite a, it's been quite a couple of months for that guy. Um, yeah, I just yeah. bought the the AEW shirt, and I'm mad because the the one with the with the uh, black uh, collar has sold out. So I bought the regular white one, which I you know wasn't a, too much of a big deal. But then they just announced that they restocked the original with the black collar. Not now I'm upset. Yeah, but, but yes, it's, it's been a great. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see him back. I'm happy for him. He seems to be very happy that he's back. He's out here doing stage dives. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And, you know, if that doesn't convince you that he's happy, then I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's doing that. He's, he's uh, uh, talking at the end of the shows, you know, uh, to the fans. He's announcing. He's, he's out there in the crowd sometimes. Like, he seems like he's having time of his life. Yeah, so... It took a lot to convince him to come back. Yeah, yeah. And I think his name's Tony Khan. Yeah, Tony Khan. He he had to do a lot of convincing, obviously. And I feel like it's, with AEW, they're going to let these wrestlers be themselves, be authentic. Um, not let them be cookie cutter, per se. Uh, CM Punk is no cookie cutter character by any means especially when he's on that microphone so as long as they let him just be him uh both sides are going to be just doing just fine in the long term he's in his he's in his 40s now so we'll see yeah i think he, i don't i don't see him doing it for like the next you know 10 but i i maybe next three four maybe five uh you know, as long as he's having fun, I, I see him. I see him doing it for for a little while. Yeah. So I I say three years tops. I say three yeah. years. Um, Not that seems reasonable. And then here, he here shut it down for good. So speaking of AEW, they've been getting a lot of momentum since All Out. So obviously they got Punk. Then they got the Adam Cole. Then they got Brian Danielson. I mean, they are just signing big star after big star. How are you feeling about AEW collectively as far as the talent that they have and then where they go from here? Because it feels like they, they got things going right now. Um, it seems like Tony has it all planned. Like, when you keep seeing all these names added, it's like, oh, man, do they have room for all these people? But, I mean, they got two shows now. I think they got room. I, I think they they have a you know a good idea with uh, with each people they're getting. I don't think they're just getting people just to stack them like you know how WWE has been doing the past few years. Yeah. Uh, I think they got you know a, you know as few people that you'll be like oh man you know how come they're not using you know such and such right now? But you know I, I think those people turn around as well. Yeah, and you know so they got dynamite. They got rampage. They got AEW Dark and Dark Elevation on Mondays and Tuesdays on YouTube. So with all these platforms, they got plenty of room uh, yeah. for, for for anybody. And uh, Tony Khan, he, he's pushing the white right buttons. Um, so that's he he's got he's got a lot going for him. Uh, and and you know, Kevin Owens is going to be a free agent at the top of next year. So these next few months is definitely going to tell us where uh, KO or, you know, Kevin is going to end up come next year. He's accomplished a lot. Um, he's, has, he's won championships. He's had big matches. But ever since the feud with Roman, he's kind of been under the radar. And I'm not sure he's the type of guy that you want to put under the radar, given the talent that he is. Like, how do you feel about Kevin Owens, and 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 do you think he'll be leaving come next year? The way things are going, it looks like he's go like he's going. Um, you know, like you said, after those matches with Roman, he really hasn't done much, and then lately, we've seen him get you know beat up by you know uh, Corbin, and uh, and just really just treated like you, you know like a jobber. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, you hate to see it. And but it also looks familiar. It looks like how Dean Ambrose was treated right before he was leaving. Yeah. So uh, and then another thing, uh, which I believe Cody Rhodes said when he left, uh, when he left uh, WWE, uh, Kevin Owens is the one that, that they got him in contact with uh, the Young Bucks because um, obviously he's pretty cool with them. So in yeah. a way, you kind of say that. Kevin Owens played a role in starting AEW because he got Cody hooked up with Bullet Club. Mm, yeah, so that's that's interesting. I did not know about that at all. Um, I, I yeah, know that. yeah. Cody said um, he said when he uh, when he left, um, he was just like he he gave him Young Bucks number. He's like, uh, and he he reached out to the Young Bucks and he's like, look out for Cody. He's a good guy. Um, and they did. I, well, obviously, they, they did a lot. They looked out for him, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he they were at Wing of Honor for, for a while, did the Bullet Club thing, did all in, and then AEW. So, Kevin Owens, quite the contributor. Um, yeah. So, it yeah. definitely feels like that's an option he would look at, seeing that, okay, I looked out for you, you know, would turn the favor. And you know, you and, could be Kevin Steen again. And, you know, and, and you know, they want him there. So. Yeah. And Adam Cole, man, like. He's friends with the Young Bucks, too. And his girlfriend just so happens to be the woman's champion. Yeah. That was a foregone conclusion. So, I mean, Tony Khan, he got money somewhere in that pocket. Like, hey, once your contract expire, come, come over here. We'll, we'll, we'll treat you right. We'll let you be Kevin Steen. You see all these other talent. We'll let them be themselves. He's kind of like Shook Knight right now. He's like a, like a, you know, Shook Knight, a little Shook Knight, a little nice, nicer than Shook Knight, but he's got some Shook Knight in him. Like he'll pay everybody and anybody just to get on board with, uh, with AUW. So with that being said, um, so WWE draft just ended. Um, Crown Jewel is coming up. You got the King of the Wing tournament coming up. You got the Queen, the Crown, the Queen's Crown tournament coming up. So obviously, um, these superstars about to get into their new homes per se. Um, how do how do you feel about? I mean, you kind of already point out that WWE is going through some things up and down. They got hit hard with the pandemic. They cut a lot of people. Do you think WWE is going to be able to bounce back from this? Or do you think? I, well, yeah. you know, I, it's a weird thing. Uh, I, I, um, I mean, I think they will, but it, I, I also think that they, that they feel like they, they're going in a whole new direction. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't think they even like care about like trying to uh, uh, bounce back in the way we want. Like as far as like getting like the you know that hardcore audience back or anything. Like I think yeah. they have different. Like you see with NXT 2.0, it's like it's a, it's a whole different uh, direction they're headed. Yeah, I've had I have some iffy feelings about 2.0. I mean, I do like that they introduce a new talent, but man, it feels like Gargano's in the back burner. I mean, Ciampa is the champion, but for how long? You got Rick Steiner's son now challenging him for the NXT title. So is, is, it, is it, it, his name bother you or no? Uh, Braun Baxter? Um, it's all right, I guess. <laughs> Um, it just you know it, you know he'd be cooler if he was just you know Rex Steiner. Uh, like I don't I don't understand the reason yeah. why. So. I guess they're trying to like separate, trying to make him like a whole different person. I guess I don't know. He's he still if you look at his attire, it looks resemblance to his father. Uh, but I guess name wise, I mean it would have been easy just to to name him. After his father, I guess. But then again, it, it, yeah. It, I think it'd be very easy. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, you, 
you know, I'm assuming the only reason that they wouldn't is maybe because, you know, Scott Steiner said a lot of negative things about WWE. But, you know, him naming him something else doesn't change that. We all know how Scott Steiner feels. Yeah. Uh, but he's still a Steiner. It's not his dad. That's his uncle. Like, Rick yeah. Steiner hasn't said anything bad about WWE. Yeah. Yeah, I met the Steiners last month. Uh, um, and they, they were cool. They were very both cool. of them? Yeah, I, I met them both at uh, Lexington Comic Con. Um, uh. So that's one of the rare times you see them do these convention stuff. And uh, yeah, they, yeah. They were, they were pretty nice. They were cool. Scott I had he, some. Oh, I didn't know Rick was coming out. Yeah, yeah. Both Rick and Scott, they were there, Lexington Comic Con. Um, Rick was laid back. He was cool. He was chill. Scott, Scott, on the other hand, he still got that upbeat to him. Talking <laughs> about mathematics and stuff, 33% chance. He's still, he's still that dude. And he's he's still in good shape given his age. That's good. Um, but yeah, the Steiners, man, they were they were cool. They were cool. Uh so Man, I will say one thing that WWE has going for them is the diversity of opportunities. You know, guys like the New Day, the Bloodline, Hit Row. I mean, Big E's the WWE champion right now. That's yeah, a big yeah. deal. And then, you know, a lot of people are upset that he, Big E, Woods, Kofi are separated again, but you know, I'm maybe, I'm one of those people. Yeah, but I feel like we already seen what they could do as a trio. They 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 have solidified themselves as one of the all time great teams. And you know, yeah, yeah. Woods and Kofi. You know, for Woods, he's you know we starting to see more of him in the limelight as far as wrestling. Uh, we yeah, used yeah. to him being on the microphone and stuff, and Big E. He let it be known, like he sees himself being the world champion. So I say, you know what? Let's let's see. He's got the belt right now. Drew McIntyre is coming for him at Crown Jewel. Let's see what happens in a few weeks. But uh, um, from that perspective, I understand why people are upset with that. But I look at it as an opportunity for Biggie to thrive as a, a champion, as a guy being on his own. So, I mean, I guess we'll see. That's just, I'm just, that's my perspective, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I, I get it. I just, um, you know, when you see, when you see the New Day um, together and then you just see Hurt Business get back together, then you see the bloodline, like, oh man, this is a nice, you know, combination of, you know, factions that we could see feuding with each other. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Um, especially, you know, I was waiting to see a program with the Hurt Business and the New Day. Then all of a sudden the New Day moved to SmackDown. Uh, now, if this gives Kofi the opportunity to bounce back solo wise to, you know, get in line for the, uh, the Universal Championship, I'm all for it. I just don't see it. Um, but uh, looking at that roster, there isn't too many other challengers. Uh, there's Drew McIntyre um, and uh, Kofi and Jeff Hardy. I mean, you know, somebody new can step up as well. But, you know, other than that, it's not a uh, it's not a lot of guys, uh, you know, world title division uh, level people on, on the roster. So um, I'm hoping maybe Kofi can step up and, and get back in uh, in his in his main event position. Yeah. You know, Roman, he's he he's in the bag right now. Yeah. Yeah. His momentum. He's a lot more confident on that microphone. He's a, yeah. he's a lot more, um, you know, he's a lot more confident now. Um, <laughs> and the, the, the crowd, even even as a bad guy, the people are really starting to grow on him now. They grow uh, yeah, on yeah. him. And you, you hear people yelling, acknowledge me. Like I just heard somebody um, at work the other day, yell, acknowledge me. I'm like, Really? You know a woman? <laughs> I thought you hated the guy. Well, I did, but but yeah. he, he's good now. So, you know, tribal chief is uh, 
He's doing his thing, the Usos being the Usos, you know. So like I said earlier, the, the diversity of the roster and the opportunities. And I'm glad you brought up the Hurt Business. I see that they are all on wall now. Lashley, Benjamin, and Alexander. So once MVP gets back from whatever injury he may has, uh, then things will really get going for them. So I'm, I'm curious to see. Uh, let's see how long it lasts. But, yeah. but we can say that majority of the black wrestlers keeping things in the forefront in the WWE. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, and in AEW, uh, Leo Rush has, has just came back, so I'm happy to see where that goes. I'm, I, I like Leo, and I, you know, I know he's done. You know, he, he he's a he's a little shaky about. You know, I think he quit last year, but now he's yeah. back. Um, he's super talented, so I I just hope he can live up to his potential. Yeah, he's in, and the thing is, the guy's so young. He's in his early to mid twenties. Yeah, so it yeah. was devastating. He got hurt at double or nothing, and then he retired after. And which I think that was more of a decision based on emotion at the yeah. time. Uh, I I don't you know I think he he his emotions was you know heading towards that, but and he you know. I'm pretty sure a lot of wrestlers would have, you know, said things like that back in the nineties, you know, we wouldn't, you know, backstage, they probably all were talking like at certain times. Um, but now in, you know, in the social media age, people can just put their, you know, feelings, especially young people, you know, like you said, he's, he's like 25, you know, he's still got the, you know, teenage type spirit to him. So yeah, you, you know how kids are they, you know, as soon as they, something bad happens, they think it's the end of the world. And I, and I think that's how he was like, he, he just wanted to say he quit, but you know, as soon as he got better, he rethought things. Well, you know, but I'm not done wrestling. You know, yeah. He, he, he. yeah. Um, just I mean, I'm happy that he's back. And um, we'll we'll see how it goes, man. And uh he def I definitely believe he can live up the potential. Uh and uh it'll be interesting to see what the AEW does with him. They also signed Bobby Fish. As I just, well. I thought yeah. that was just like a one match thing, but no, he's there. Okay. Yeah. You know, T Tony Khan was so like, hey, you get that. Uh, but Peter Wesley, man, great chatting with you. Uh, Always. Nearly a half an hour. You being in the car and now you're on your. Yeah. I apologize. I got, I got caught in traffic. I thought yeah. I'd be home a little earlier. It's all good, man. I appreciate you. Uh, be safe out there. Check out his music, 92 Levels, Money Ritual, Apocalypse Twins, Wall Yow with Cheese. Very busy year for this man, uh, Peter yeah, Wrestling. I'm not out. done. I got more coming. Yeah, so thanks again, man. And uh, you enjoy the rest of your night. You too, man. You too. All right. Take it easy. Uh, All right. That was Peter Wrestling joining me.